Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Time Is Now podcast. My name is Jody Albert Moss, and my guest today is Vanessa Wilson, and she's the host of the Holistic Healing Fair. They get all over the place in Ontario. So I'm going to turn it over to her, and she'll give us a bio and some information, and we'll move forward. Vanessa? Hi, yeah. So I'm Vanessa Wilson. Um, I started running the Holistic Healing Fairs in 2016 in Sudbury, My next event is going to be my 100th event, and that'll be in Kitchener. Um, The Holistic Healing Fairs are a wellness, mental health-focused event. Uh, It's free to attend, and it showcases different wellness practitioners and all things wellness, I say. Um, And it's encouraged for everybody to attend of all walks of life and all walks of healing, no matter where you are in your healing journey. Um, And it's been a really heart-filling thing that I've been able to do since 2016. That's great. I've been fortunate enough to attend a few of your um, healing fairs. I've been around. I went to St. Catharines. We went to Ancaster. I forget where where all we've been. (laughs) But you really attract a diverse um, group of vendors. I'll I'll call them vendors, Mm -hmm. exhibitors or whatever. Uh, There's a a very broad spectrum. Like There's everything from uh, I've seen tarot card readers there and people that get messages for people. And I, I, I've seen a fellow that had a light up pendant on that worked with energies. So yeah. how do you find all these people, I guess, because you've been doing it for years? Yeah. So in the beginning, it was hard. Um, there's been a lot of challenges. I'm really trying to find like heart centered people was my goal. Um, I, I really love that the crowd that follows around and the vendors that join, like they're very heart centered. Um, I I really don't put a cap on wellness if someone thinks that what they have can benefit someone, whether it's like a religious party or someone that does readings or all natural stuff, you know, anything education based. If there's something out there that can help someone and they want to join, I open the door. Um, I just have the, you know, the morals and valuable standard at the event where it's like they have to be like the egos at the door. Um, They have to be there for the right reasons. And so far, it's been really successful um, over the years. The pandemic really had a lot of people fall off. Um, I had a lot of people show me their true colors in terms of uh, where their healing was. And it was very valuable in terms of kind of creating space for new, because since the pandemic, it has been uh, like the most amazing people have been coming out and and showing up and holding space as as vendors at the events. And that's what I found by attending. Anybody that I talked to there was friendly, welcoming, eager to share information, and the energy in the place is just fantastic. I was going through your uh, website, and we'll post all this information um, when I post this podcast. You started out in Sudbury. Yeah, um, so how the events were born. um, I moved to Sudbury in 20-something, I don't remember, 2016 or before then, um, and not saying anything negative about the person, but I was with an emotionally unavailable person, I guess we could say, Um, and being far away from my friends and my family, I kind of took a dive into um, depression, Um, and it's something that I've kind of gone in and out of my whole life ever since being a teenager, and um, that's a whole other story, Um, but in 2016, I walked into the crisis center in Sudbury and I sat on the psychiatrist's couch and he's like, I told him like, I don't want your medication. And it's not that I have anything wrong with medication. I just know in my per- personal circumstances, previously I was on it for so long um, that I'd fought to get off. Um, but yeah, so he told me, I think I just, you just need validation. Um, I ended up having a Zoom call, um, a hypnosis and emotion code session with my friend, Ashley O'Connell. Um, and during that session, she said, you know, why don't you just create an event? And my first event, I had a goal for like 30 vendors. I had over 72 join um, and we had over a thousand people show up that day to attend. And that's when I knew that there were so many other people just like me that needed help. Um, So they were born in Sudbury. I was only in Sudbury for about four years of the duration, but um, my lowest points there brought me to my future, which is really special. It's interesting. And I'll use the term, the universe. You could use creator, God, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's a name, right? (laughs) has a way of breaking us down and it's not always an easy path and i know through my own experiences and you may agree with this that we may not look at things the way we did if we hadn't been in that low spot absolutely i agree with you yeah it's a turnaround place and uh it's not easy a lot of people say they want to do the right thing um your motto, I guess it is about bringing people together and letting them know they're safe. And that's, that's, that's the same um, things I say to people, I want to bring everybody together. And, you know, I think we find that 
when we hit our hard times, we mm -hmm. tend to want to isolate. And that's yes. not a good thing because really all the listeners, you're not the only one going through it. Others have been through it. Others will go through it. So connect with like minds. And that's what I like about these shows because even the people who attend are friendly. It's yeah. like really incredible. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's amazing how many different walks of life come through the door. Um, some people that are experts in the wellness world, some people that have never experienced it at all, like they have no idea. Um, and it's it, the idea is creating a safe space for vulnerability um, because there is strength in vulnerability, and we all too often kind of show up with all of these walls or misinformation or whatever the case is. Um, I try to make sure that it's meeting people wherever they're at. Like I'm not against pharmaceutical businesses. I'm not against, you know, not seeing your doctor. Um, the big a la carte menu of the holistic healing fairs is that, you know, if you're prescribed a pill from your doctor, that's great. But then there's the wellness as a whole. Like there's not, they're not asking how much water you're drinking. Are you stretching? What are you consuming? What's in your body, on your body, how you're speaking to yourself and different things like that are available at the holistic healing fair. So it provides more information for you know learning to be well with yourself it's true and it is a, it is a place to gather information and that's mm -hmm. very important because you know I, I don't care what anybody does i just think they should have the choice to decide for themselves and a lot of things that i found with some people is they'll get a little piece of information and they'll go flying off on that I believe we should get information from all aspects, Western medicine, Eastern medicine, food, diet, the whole spectrum. Get as much information as you can. And that's what's available at your your shows. Yeah, it's uh, learning as you go. Take what you need, leave what you don't is really where I put it, because we're all on such different levels of our pathway. And it's learning to kind of embrace every version of yourself as you go um, and making the most of it. But definitely. Um, absorbing as much as you can i was really well i had to take a double take at the uh, ancaster show that you just had i looked over and we walked around you know when, when you go to these shows we always my wife and i Catherine, we go around the room three or four times because we will walk right by people and miss them right yeah and i looked over and here are these ladies and it was uh, I, th I think it was halda clark or whatever anyways there it was they were selling a parasite cleanse eh Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that in like over 40 years back in the Hannah Kroger days. So uh, that's so important. Um, I, just to see them at your show was incredible because, and you know, parasites. People... Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, parasites are basically the basic of everything. And we're talking microscopic little, uh, but they do, they had a cleanse. They go collect the walnuts. They made the tinctures and yeah. it was refreshing to see them there. Yes. And most people don't know about parasites. And a lot of the times, like we have these indicators in our body that are telling us that something's wrong and we're treating other things like sugar cravings, le le like being lethargic, bloating, that kind of stuff where you think it's one thing, but it could be something else. Um, the education part of something like a parasite cleanse is very important because people need to do the full circle of education on it. It's not just hearing about it thinking about it, like seeing a video on TikTok and then just going and doing one. It's like really learning your body, the potential dangers and the benefits at the same time. Um, I think that the booths that we have, they're really good on educating and being smart about it as well and, and providing safe products. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, tell me about your vendor's table. I've seen you've started My setting up a table and I think you have a book, don't you? Yeah. So um, during the pandemic, when I had another low, so I rescheduled 17 of the holistic healing fairs three different times during the pandemic. The third time I rescheduled was because they put out the passport system. Um, I could have brought the events back. And I mean, like, this is my livelihood. I live off of them. Um, they're my business and not only just my heart, but they're also the structure of my life. Um, and I, I couldn't close the door on anybody and it's nobody, it's not my business what anybody does. So I postponed for a third time. And just to keep, give you an idea, like when you postpone once, like one event, it's like calling the venue, notifying the vendors, rebooking the date. I did that three times and it's minimum 30 vendors per event. So uh, 17 different events. Um, I ended up having my daughter during the second lockdown. Um, her name is Nova. She's three and a half now. And um, I got pummeled with isolation as a first time mom um, during a pandemic, during a lockdown, really no idea what I'm doing. I don't think anybody knows what they're doing when they start, unless they have like that really big support system. Um, my family's amazing at being there and supporting me the best way that they could. Um, but I think it was a lot more in 
intertwined with it. Um, but I had insomnia and my daughter didn't sleep. She actually still very rarely does. And um, I originally started thinking of questions because in terms of journaling and outletting, I can't look at a blank piece of paper and journal. I need like prompts or something to like formulate my thoughts. So I started thinking of really deep questions that kind of really made me explore who I am. Um, and I loved even more exploring my answers, but then I kept them all, compiled them into a journal, and now I have a journal that I sell at my table. So it's a, uh, and I never thought I'd publish a book. It's interesting because without the pandemic, I wouldn't have been put in the position of doing that. My cat has paper behind me. <laughs> um, yes, it's a, a really special, another turnaround circle kind of thing of in one of my lows, just, you know, I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just doing it. And it was really cool because in the middle of the night, I'd wake up, I'd think of a question because that's kind of became my theme of, okay, like if I'm just spiraling anyways, I'm just going to think of a theme. I'd think of the question, but I knew if I didn't write it down that I'd wake up and it would be gone. So I would get up, write it down, go back to sleep, and then woke up and had no idea what I wrote. So it was, some would say it was channeled. Some would say it was just, you know, it was just one of those most interesting things, like where your body can bring you when you kind of just trust one toe in front of another when you have no idea what's happening and and it just kind of all fell together really beautifully what's well, great it's 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 the journey eh? it's the life yes. path and it never ends once no. you're open to it it just keeps going on um yeah. what kind of people are benders i know i touched on the people that i was attracted to um i guess all that information's on your website like say someone wanted to be a vendor or yeah, so under the exhibitors tab on my website, um, there's a full application form. I'm announcing my 2025 lineup um, at the end of next month. And that'll be like at the minimum of at the end of next month. Um, so if you wanted to become a vendor, that's on my website. Um, and depending if you're interested in the cities, like seeing what vendors are at each event, you can go on my website and see them there as well. Next year is going to look a little different. Um, I'm phasing out summer events. Um, I'm putting back-to-back -back events all in the spring and the fall. And in the summer, my poor cat is back there, <laughs> um, is uh, going to be a retreat that I'm organizing. And then just maybe one or two summer shows, including one in Newfoundland. So, Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the Newfoundland one. That, one, yeah. that would be very interesting. Yeah, because I, I went to Newfoundland this summer. I have family there. Um, and Newfoundlanders are like the most deserving, love-filled, kind, gentle people. Um, and most people that run uh, events similar to mine, they go west, but they don't go east. Um, and we'll just have to see how it goes. Yeah, and I know from talking to you in the past, like, you're all over Ontario. You do the northern Ontario routes, too. Do you want to name a couple cities that you're in? And um, For like the north... Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie. Um, I'm doing North Bay again. I'd love to do Thunder Bay, but it's getting a little bit too far. Um, but and then from Windsor to Sault Ste. Marie, everywhere in between. Yeah, that's all over the place. Yeah. Uh, we have family up in Bruce Mines. That's 40 minutes this side of Sault Ste. Marie, like the oh, east yeah. side. That's yeah. a nice little town you may want to consider. There's lots of support in the summertime, anyways. A lot okay. of the Americans come in. Yeah, I'm always open. Uh, so I'm a big person on resistance and flow. As soon as I feel resistance, I flow away from it. So like if someone mentions a city to me, I'll explore it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Yeah. I definitely can do it. Yeah, and I know we were talking about even setting up this podcast and yeah, sure, that's fine. I don't care. Yeah, whatever. I've had enough stress <laughs> in my life. I'm 40, yeah. what am I now? 64. And <laughs> you know, I don't want that moving forward. So I try to stay as calm. I meditate a lot and that's awesome. If it's not happy and we're not getting along, it doesn't work. You know, you got it. Life is you, so much easier that way. You have a cat. We have two cats. It's well, I yeah. like I like <laughs> cat energy. Yeah, um, uh, we have two cats and a dog. But my daughter left like um, paper all over the ground, like as she was coloring on it, and so my cats are just having a heyday on it. <laughs> yeah. Is there something you want to tell the people? Um. No, I think I think that's it. So you're just an average lady doing, she has a vision and off she goes type of thing. Eh? Yeah, um, I set a target and I meet it and I just believe in myself. And uh, any advice I could give is when you feel like you're kind of losing yourself, just picture it as making space. Because you may, like, if you would have told me when I was sitting um, with a psychiatrist in the crisis center that in a couple of months, I would be running some the beginning of something that would completely change my life. I would have never believed you. So it's really just putting sparks of hope into yourself and just believing that there can be a better tomorrow. And all your shows are free admission. That's yes, interesting because yeah. we're in a time where everybody wants to charge 10 bucks to get in, you know? Yeah. I, I will not put a dollar on mental health. And if someone can find anything that can change their life in my event, I, I wouldn't put a dollar on it. 
Yeah, that's what we liked about your shows as well. You can come in, form your own opinions, make your own connections, and just it's just a great place. I think we spent like two or two or three hours at the last. Yeah, one. I love it. <laughs> Tell me something else. Tell me, uh, we've heard about the shows. We touched on where you started. Is there a spiritual, it, it, spiritual is, it's an open kind of statement, yeah. but is there a spiritual aspect to your life? Not really. I'm half Jewish and half Christian. Um, I've always trickled into the wellness field, uh, mainly for my own mental health journey. So it's like, but other than that, no, hmm. I just, I love everybody. I, I, I see everybody equal. I don't see any separation in people, regardless of what they believe in. That's how I try to live too. I, yeah. I, in this day and age where we are, everybody needs a title or a, a name to use as a reference point, I guess. But uh, I try to, when people ask me what I am, I'm just me, you know, yep. live your life, be happy, be positive. Are there, there are things that you incorporate in your life that help you get in touch with your intuitive side? Yeah. So I guess it's always a journey to that. Um, sometimes I am stubborn to the point where I wait until I'm at phases of myself that I shouldn't be like very low to pull to these things. Um, but I, I have used meditation. I have my Reiki. I've done an emotion code course. I've done Oracle cards. Um, my whole healing journey, I've kind of trickled into all of these things. And that's why when the holistic fairs were born, um, throughout my mental health journey when I thought I was chasing all of these things and learning and like, oh my goodness, there's essential oils. Oh my goodness, there's this, there's that, um, that the holistic fairs provide it just to everybody in one spot. Um, and that was very powerful, but yeah, I, um, sometimes just wait until I'm, I'm like really, really need it. Like white flag. Okay. I'll help myself now. Um, but in the, in the other side of that, I'm surrounded by like the most amazing people in Ontario. Um, and that's one of the biggest blessings that I have is that, I, since doing like over, well, going to be a hundred events, I have met some of the most amazing heart-centered, loving, kind people that really see the value in helping others. Um, and so when I need something they're they're there in a heartbeat and it's unconditional. And I just, I love everybody so much. Um, and it's really nice that I also get to share all of these amazing people with, with everybody who attends. It's interesting that you don't really act until you're in a bad place or really down. I do the same thing. It's yeah. like you have all these tools around, all these things you should do. And personally, I'm the biggest procrastinator in the world. I put it off yeah. until I, I'm i either going to explode or have a nervous breakdown. Like yeah. I came through some hardships this year and I really had to dig into my meditation. Like I, I was aware of it, but who thinks about it when you're in those situations, right? Absolutely. So, well, and sometimes you're reminded, okay, like, okay, now you use the tools, like, because when your body starts speaking to you, it's kind of gotten to you at a cellular level. It's not just like tedious things that are bugging you. It's like your body speaking. And it's like, okay, uh, like I have the most admiration to anybody who meditates on the regular and can actually contain it. Like I have some vendors that are like, um, Anthony, he's my flute guy. I can't ask him how your day is going because his answer regardless is it's always a good day, Vanessa. Why do you ask me? <laughs> so I know. Now, <laughs> yeah that's how he talks eh yeah everything flows yeah it is yeah. um i meditate on a regular basis but I, I was caught up in trying to understand what meditation was all my life and i thought yeah. it was too complicated and took too much time but it doesn't it's not sitting in meditation for a week mm -hmm. you may attain enlightenment just thinking about meditation so it's all the way we look at things eh when we step out of the logical and start into the listening and just, it really is all in the most simple parts of our lives that we can find those toolkits. Um, it's just stepping outside of our programming. Definitely. For me, like my brain is a squirrel brain. It goes like 300 miles a minute. And uh, so meditating is challenging in terms of shutting it off. So I like listening to guided meditations on YouTube. So they're free. And I just type in like, and they have like waves in the background and I just listen to the person talk. And those have been super helpful for me with the meditation side whatever works you know there is no right or wrong in the world if it, if it resonates with you that's what you do yeah. and that's we get into that situation too we're all comparing each other to you know what so-and-so does or you know it's not about money it's not about it's you hit on programming it is about programming we have to get out of that and again you also hit on listen to your body your body will speak to you but a lot of people i find are so busy they don't notice it 
Yes. And certain things that we do, like um, our body retains, like, so it's like the subconscious and our body holds on to certain memory memories, even though if our, like our brain doesn't re remember it. And so kind of the new world is learning about that stuff. Like there's the traumas, there's maybe these health issues, but like how deep does it go? Um, and then after a certain point of ignoring your body, like it may even just be numb, but you won't even realize like the amount of work that you have to do underneath something. It's, it's really wild when you actually start learning about it and seeing it actually work. Um, like if you were to tell me that you could release a trapped emotion from muscle testing at a distance, like to do like the subconscious um, muscle testing, which is kinesiology and like tell it like she could, Ashley O'Connell specifically could tell me like, okay, you were you know, this year's old, this is who was you were with, and this is the trapped emotion, what comes up. And then I, it's like, and then she releases it. And it's like a weight just going right off of you. It, it really is something that you cannot explain. You have to experience to believe. I've uh, experienced emotion code too. Our friend, Laura Sheldrick, we actually did a podcast with her and it's pretty incredible. And, and she was getting into like, um, like ancestral stuff and it's all in there and I was oh, not yeah. a I was not a believer in that in the beginning but you know I guess just be aware and flow with it because all that information still we retain it we yes. we think it's just you know wake up and go to work and that's life but that's not life at all no and it is so much deeper and sometimes we hold on to burdens of generational like generations above us and realizing you know how deep the programming is like, I mean, I'm half Jewish, right? So, and like, when you go back to the other side of like, and it's also like what happened versus what we're told. And there's just a whole bunch. It's just always learning, never just settling with what you know, trying to grow from what you can learn about. And it just also can say like, things can change as we change too. So just like, I hope that nobody ever thinks that they're stuck in wherever they are because it can get better. It just might take some work. It does get better and it does take work. We have to really get comfortable with discernment and decide what's right for us because there's a whole whack of new information coming. I'm at the point in my life that I don't believe anything I've learned. I don't believe anything I've seen on in the media. It's just all mind blowing. So that's where meditation's helped me. Because if it helps. you know, oh, sorry, Go ahead. do you know Dan and Kasha, my vendors, they do the tapping. They have the butterflies. They live on a bus house, the bouse. Uh, they're at all of the shows um no, i don't think so like, danny's the one that told me when i started uh the feeling path with them they run a feeling path um i did it in 2018 he said there was never anything wrong with you life just happened to you and that was the first time in my life i was reminded that there was nothing wrong with me because my whole life i've been told that there was something wrong with me so when i touched on the medication thing earlier um i was prescribed antidepressants from 12, 12 until 22 when I was 12, I was a teenager. I was going through some stuff. Like instead of anybody asking me what was ha happening to me, they just told me there was something wrong with me and gave me a pill. And then it was unmonitored. And whenever I wanted honor, whenever I wanted off, he said, well, you can raise the dose or we can change the pill. And it was 10 full years of my life, my whole puberty and everything that I was on the medication. Um, and always told there was something wrong with me. And then getting off of them when I was 22, it was like I had to feel feelings all over again that I didn't even, like I had forgot how it felt to feel different feelings because I was so numb from the medication. And this is just in my personal circumstance that, you know, it was where instead of like really decoding what was happening to me, they just gave me a pill, um, which I may or may not have needed at the time. But I feel that if they would have really broke me open, they would have gotten more as a teenager because I was very self-destructive. Um, but yeah, Danny, hearing those words, and I share those words with so many people, anybody that I can, you know, that really thinks that they're just like labeled in this destruction. It's like, there's never anything wrong with you. Life just happened to you. Um, and those words definitely like helped me with Danny, like helping me realize like the programming of like how deep our programming is of what we're told. I like that. And, you know, if we could just go back to that time from the second we're born until they gave us our birth certificate and we started the programming mm -hmm. that space in between is who we are and life did happen to us yeah but you know and a lot of people were i'm, I'm, I'm not going to get in go down a deep rabbit hole <laughs> but a lot of people were prescribed we could anytime you want to do another podcast but <laughs> okay a lot of people were prescribed things to take and it's because they didn't fit into the world they wanted us to fit into. Doesn't mean you were wrong or anything wrong. Yeah. Now they're finding that autism and the rest of this, you're, they're like 
almost enlightened beings. They're so in tune with other things, right? That's and such a high vibration. And we're getting back there. Prophecy, there was a prophecy, you know, years ago. And we've hit the point where we were supposed to decide, are we going to take the spiritual path or are we going to stay on the material path? That time has passed. I think it's called the eighth fire prophecy or whatever. Um, if you don't choose the spiritual, you can go the other way, but things are going to get rough for you because I think our, 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 our soul or our higher self is going to make the right decisions, even if we don't know that it's making the right decisions and it's just going to shake everything up. And that's yes. where we are right now. Right. And it's going to get uncomfortable, but when it gets uncomfortable, you have to move. You have to decide to move and change and like also understanding that when you lose stuff, you're making space. You, you just don't focus on the loss. You focus on the space that you're making when you make changes. Yeah, And hang around like-minded people and, and come to yeah. your shows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, We like it. We're so charged after we leave because yeah. we're around people we can have conversations with, you know? It's definitely a community um, and it's a community for the right reasons. And I think that's what I love it the most. Like, so I, like with this year alone, it's 33 of the events. And with me having a three-year-old, you know, it's um, a lot of work, but for me, it's not as much work because I love what I do and the people make it so easy. I mean, like, I feel like I'm just a professional problem solver at this point because stuff is going to happen and it's going to go wrong and it's my job to fix it. All the other small details just fall into line and I get to see my friends, like the family that I've built over time and meeting new people and like in certain circumstances, you know, they're new, they're scared. They're like, this is my first market. I'm like, you won't have a worry at all. You know, reach to your neighbors, ask me if you need anything, like just, you know, just show up as their full selves. It's really special. And yeah, I am, I'm exhausted after my events, but I'm always happy at them because they're, <laughs> the group is so good. It's a lot of work on all levels, like mental, physical, spiritual, whatever, energetic. It, it does, you may think it's not affecting you and it's not, it's, it's positive, but it, it does take energy from you. Right. Absolutely. Well, I'm still looking forward to sending my application and to be a vendor soon. I'm working, I was working on it before we came on here today and Perfect. you can see some of my stuff in the back I made over 30 years ago. Um, so yeah, we'd like to get part, become part of that team and that would be amazing. I look forward to it. It's exciting. Like, it's just so, I, I know I sound like I'm over the top, but we we look forward to your shows. And I think Kitchener's coming up, you said, right? Yeah. We um, might even, not this weekend, but next weekend. Yeah. Oh, I don't, we might be up north. I got family stuff going on up north, eh? I see yeah. the Sault the, the, uh, Ste. Marie show is coming up, but I'm not sure yes. I can be there for that. Oh, see, I, I love the Northern shows like Sudbury, Sault Ste. Marie, like they're just, they're super special. Like the, the quality of people, I mean, like the city people are good as well, but there's just a different type of people up North. Um, yeah. And they need, it so, they need it so much because they don't have a lot to do up there other than like the usual. And I find with everything, eh? whether it's a show or whatever, the, the people hosting them, they want convenient. They don't want to go too far. They don't, they want everything to basically yeah. come. I've been through it. We did shows for years. And that's what I liked about you. You go, you said to me, you go where you think you believe the light needs to be or the energy. Is that how you put it? Um, I don't know. Sometimes I say it as a lighthouse mentality. I just put the light out and the right people show up. Uh, like I, I, and for some reason, like, even if the show isn't the attendance, what I wanted to, like, I, I firmly believe that some people call us there. I think yeah. it was maybe for that one person and all of their angels and stars, like aligned us and shook us and threw us there because it was for that one person. But yeah, we, we put the light out everywhere that we are for sure. Like you even go to Manitoulin Island. Yes, I do. <laughs> I love the Island. That's one of my favorite shows. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk a bit about that? I've never been to Manitoulin Island. I've been by on the 17 in, where is it, Espanola, where you turned down? But uh, You have to go. If you could make it to the September show, I think it's at the end of September. Um, that's when the salmon are spawning and they all climb the river. Um, there's Bridal Veil Falls. So what I like about when I place the Manitoulin show is the tourists are gone. It's mainly just islanders that are there. Mm -hmm. um, and they are the most welcoming, loving. Like, And there's something about Manitoulin Island on a vibrational level that most people that go there want to stay. Like it's a place that will continue to call you after you've been because it's just um, the water, the people, the environment, the views. Um, it is a very special place to be. A friend of mine was telling me about Manitoulin Island. I, I've been around in the old days. and He was saying there was 
crystal bells or stone bells on the island, and they're still there apparently, that they would ring big ones and it would reverberate the energy out over Ontario for sure. And it would call them for ceremony. Oh, wow. So it's See, very I, interesting. I only get a couple of days at a time. Like I go up and then I come home after the event. So I not very often get a chance to explore, but that sounds amazing. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. Well, I know I, I appreciate your shows going as often as they do, but I understand okay. that <laughs> it, it really eats into your family life and your time, especially with a little one. We've been there, done that. Yeah. We, we used to take our daughter to the shows. Oh, wow. In a way, you know, it allows me more time with her because if I worked Monday to Friday, I'd never see my daughter. Um, it's so it's a it's provided me the ability and like during the pandemic, I had the most unconditional one on one that like is not really experienced in any other forms because it, everything was closed. There was nothing around. All we had was each other um, and then blending the both worlds together. But yeah, no, I feel like in a way my events provide more for my daughter because she's able to like see me during the week. Um, I just have her in childcare a couple of days a week just for me to do the background stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's really cool that I'm I'm not in a nine to five. I appreciate that. And I think it's very important that the young people experience this. Um, yeah, I call them young people because actually they're probably older than us, um, soul wise. You know, Absolutely. they have a lot of knowledge. And we took our daughter; she's been exposed to everything. But then they hit the teenage ages, you know, years yeah. and. Oh, that's not cool. My friends aren't into that, but she's coming around now. She's 20. So nice. Yeah. Society tells them that everything that they shouldn't be right. So like, and yeah. Nova's only three, so she's being exposed to everything. Like she thinks my world is amazing. Like with my vendors and my events and she has her own little vendor table set up where she sells things in the living room and stuff like that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, I hope I can only hope that she wants to pursue something like that. Cause I, you know, she's going to be exposed to it all, but I'm, I'm okay with whatever she chooses. We just have to be there for them. They they get the influences from the educational system. And, you know, yeah. we we have to, we live here, you know, and I, I, we live in this world. So we have to be of this world, but not controlled by it. So it. we just put them out, give them the best support we can. And if they have troubles, let them know that you're there, you know. Yeah. That's all you can do. Yeah, I mean, you got to love them through it. I'm a very protective dad, but I've, I've learned how to meditation has helped me with that one because, yeah. you know, I came from in my family where it was not bad, but disciplined, right? Maybe to too far so that when I turned 21 and got out of the house, I just went crazy. So yeah. I try to just be a little more, I don't know, so understanding. You give her room to breathe. Yeah. Without, like, without you know, taking away her ability to make the decisions that that's challenging. I could even see that with a three-year-old, you know, like not wanting to make every decision, not wanting to protect everything. And sometimes you have to let them learn the hard way as long as they're safe. Right. I think that's yeah. the best thing for them. And I know what we did in our life, like she had the spiritual from the shows and the crystal. We are houses full of crystals and pyramids yes. and all kinds of things. But I also made the decision because, you know, we live, we learn, we, 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 we do things differently. My mm -hmm. our daughter's involved in every business decision we make, every financial decision we make. She knows the dollars, where it's being spent. Because That's otherwise, amazing. you know, they hit an age and then they're out of the house and they gotta learn all this stuff. They don't get it in school. So That's amazing that you can do that with her. Yeah. Well, it's just two women and me here, so I'm outnumbered. Yeah. I gotta go for <laughs> <Yeah>. the ride. <laughs> well, this has been great. Yes, Give us you. some information. Just, you know, tell us how to get a hold of you. Okay. Tell us maybe the next show is Kitchener. And yeah. uh, I'll put the website up when I put the links up. And let's hope we can help some people. So tell us how, we, how they get a hold of you. Um, so Holistic Healing Fair is listed on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you wanted to give us a follow, you can see the event updates as they come out, plus a lot of positive quotes. Um, HolisticHealingFair.com is my website. It has all of the upcoming events. Um, it will have 2025 listed, um, as well as if you're interested in vending or becoming a vendor. Uh, my application is super thorough because I don't have a lot of time to answer little questions and whatnot. So you'll find like I have a lot of the specifics really available and ready. If you have any questions about it, like please explore my event page, um, the like terms and conditions, the application has it all. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm holistic healing fair on Facebook and Instagram. That's wonderful. Wonderful. And I want to make a comment about that too. 
I know the Instagram for sure. You're an aggressive poster. I don't know if you post all the things yourself or you have someone, I don't know what you're doing, but you really support the vendors and get the information out to people through social media. And I really respect that because we've done shows and the host has like 15 followers. Yeah. You know, so anybody that wants to know about these fairs or wants to get involved and be a vendor, mm -hmm. I would follow them on Instagram. That's the best. We do highlights every single show, highlight of every single vendor that attends, their tag if they provide it. Um, the photo highlights are, are really beautifully done. And uh, it, it encourages, you know, the businesses to also share into their own because everybody benefits when, you know, everybody knows. Uh, but yeah, highlighting the businesses because they are the forefronts, you know, they're the forefront of the events. Without them, I wouldn't have any of them at all. So showcasing them is important. Sure is. Well, Vanessa, I want to thank you for being on the Time Is Now podcast. This has been really informative. I think we got a little bit out of you, a little more than what you may have expected. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I so appreciate you having me um, and attending all of the events. Um, if you are able to make it in two weeks, there's going to be a pizza party at the Kitchener events. <laughs> I'll make oh, sure you get a slice of pizza <laughs> for the good. hundred. Um, I was thinking maybe, maybe you need to have a big family, holistic healing family reunion. Yeah. Well, so in 2020, I had organized a cruise. I rented a cruise ship in the Muskokas uh, for like a networking event and then it went away and then the boat turned into a taco boat. So <laughs> oh. it's a restaurant now, but I would definitely love to, because I also like, I know, I forget that everybody doesn't know everybody because I see everybody so often, but uh, when I spread them across Ontario, there's so many amazing powerhouses I'd love to meet. Definitely. I just got a flash while you were telling me that. Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know, but I'm going to put it out there. Is there a vision to do your shows in other countries? I would love to with baby steps. Um, so Newfoundland is a big step for me to see if I can organize it. Other countries, I just don't know how the working visa would work. And I would need someone in that area. But I mean, like my doors are always open for ideas. Um, and I just, I, I really intuitively follow my bookings. Um, and if it's supposed to align, it'll happen. And if it doesn't, it'll fall. And uh, I'm always open to suggestions with other, I'd love to do them everywhere. I think that they're needed everywhere, really. I agree. Well, Vanessa, thank you again for being on the Time is Now podcast. And thank, thank you. you so thank you to all our viewers and our listeners. These This will go up across my platforms. And let's all come together, create a large family.